39 researchers and 10 universities and institutions in China came together to crack the code to one of the most difficult challenges in AI. And they might have actually done it. As you know, Grog 4 was recently released and it was a massive improvement. It scored above 50% on humanity's last exam benchmark, which is a collection of extremely difficult problems from a range of different disciplines. No human can come close to that, not even the most brilliant experts. What if Grog scored 100% instead of 50? How would that make you feel? How would that change your life in any tangible way? It seems like the models are lacking some key ingredients that aren't really measured by these benchmarks. So in a week where everyone is hyped up about Grog4 smashing yet another leaderboard, I want to shift the spotlight and show you two recent breakthroughs that are quietly redefining what AI can actually do. Let's start with a breakthrough that didn't just improve, it dominated, outperforming OpenAI by 159% on a key challenge. Current LLMs primarily operate with static core knowledge and that's one of the most bizarre things that has happened to AI. They can ace bar exams, solve Olympiad problems and compose philosophical essays on demand but can't replace the work of a personal assistant. It's like we've built a lopsided genius, superhuman in some areas but completely clueless in others. Brilliant at benchmarks, but really dumb at basic tasks. MemOS is a memory operating system for AI systems. This work finally acknowledges that memory isn't just passive storage. It's an actively evolving and critically managed component of intelligence. A core definition of intelligence is the ability to adapt to a complex dynamic environment. But LLMs don't really do that. They operate with basic knowledge from their training supplemented only by a temporary memory that vanishes after your conversation ends. Currently, the process of learning is fundamentally divorced from working. They happen in two complex completely isolated the stages. And that's a huge problem. Just think about it this way. If a PhD student joined Google, they'd be pretty smart on day one. But what if they had to leave after 24 hours? A lot of their real value comes from what happens next. Absorbing the context of the environment, learning from others, and gaining experience. I'd argue that an average high school student, after a year or two of on-the-job training, could probably contribute more than the one-day genius. So we can stack more and more blocks of knowledge on our LLMs, and even increase their IQ. But that doesn't fix our main problem. Now one way to solve this is to completely reinvent AI's architecture, like the sub-quadratic architecture we talked about before. But MemOS takes a very novel path. It integrates memory and learning into the LLMs we already have. MemOS uses a novel memory operating system designed for large language models to overcome current limitations in long-term memory, continuous learning, and personalization. This is a very good moment to talk about the concept of continuously evolving a state in intelligence. It comes up quite a bit, and it's a very useful concept to understand why current AI models need a serious upgrade. Think about how a plant adapts to its environment. The plant doesn't start with much information, a super complicated plan or an advanced algorithm, but it gradually and continuously grows through the cracks, digs through the ground, and finds a way to flourish. It's a continuous, smooth flow of adaptation, where every part of the system is dynamically adjusting. And the takeaway is, you can't skip the adaptation with more knowledge, and you can't pre-build a plant that fits every environment. There is basically no way to have an intelligent agent without continuously evolving a state. So what is the state of the art now? And how does MemOS change it? At the moment, the first obvious evolving state of the AI is the context window, which has become fairly reliable, but is super limited. About 1 million tokens at best, which is the context window of Gemini 2.5. Another approach to this problem is RAG. Retrieval Augmented Generation. This method connects the AI to an external library of information. So if you want your AI to know about your company policies, the system simply retrieves that policy document and feeds it to the AI along with your prompt on every chat session. But this is obviously a workaround, not a solution. The AI isn't actually managing this knowledge. The intelligence itself doesn't grow or adapt. It's simply being handed temporary notes for each specific task. 
and that brings us to MemOS, which changes the whole dynamic. MemOS proposes treating memory not just as a passive data storage, but as a manageable system resource. The core idea is to provide controllability, plasticity, and evolvability to LLMs, and these are the foundational pieces of continuous learning. So let's see how it actually works. The foundational unit is called a memcube, a unified abstraction that encapsulates not only the memory content itself, but also vital metadata, where it came from, its versioning and tracking how it has evolved over time. Essentially, you can think of it as a smart self-contained block of knowledge that inherently knows its own history and context. Memcubes are designed to be dynamic, not static pieces of information. This flexibility allows seamless transition between different memory types. There is internal knowledge, which is what the model learned during its initial training, and external knowledge, which is everything it learns from interacting with the world. Memcube's flexible architecture is designed to beautifully connect the two. It does this with a clever three-layered architecture, much like a computer's operating system. First is the AI API layer. This is the interface that allows the LLM to interact with the memories. In the middle is the scheduling and management layer. This is the brilliant core of the OS, the kernel that manages all the complex memory operations in the background. It decides what to fetch, what to update, and how to organize everything efficiently. And at the bottom is the storage and infrastructure layer the hard drive for the mind. This is where the data actually resides. Memories are primarily stored in a familiar tree structure, like folders and subfolders. But MemOS adds graph-style crosslinks. This allows for complex, non-hierarchical connections, like how a familiar smell can bring back childhood memories. The result is a memory system that is alive. It can insert, merge, or restructure its own knowledge, constantly optimizing itself, like evolving human thoughts. But here is the truly revolutionary part. This system allows multiple agents to share knowledge. This doesn't just improve the AI, it fundamentally blurs the line between training and deployment, which is exactly the dynamic we need, a mix of working and learning. The other thing is that these memories can stay around forever, essentially making the AI eternal. The researchers claim this unlocks a new paradigm of scaling for AI. It goes beyond bigger models or more reinforcement learning. This is continuous shared learning. It gives AI models the opportunity to not only learn on the job, but to instantly share what they have learned with each other. They are building a collective intelligence, a priceless proprietary knowledge base that a company can develop, manage, and own. Regardless of whether or not MemOS is actually the last piece of the puzzle to make truly autonomous agents, it represents a crucial leap forward, showing this massive hole in the middle of the industry that the top labs don't seem to really care about much. The performance numbers speak for themselves. Compared to OpenAI's global memory, which was the previous best, in the Locomo benchmark mark for long-term memory, MemOS improved on OpenAI's system by a staggering 159% in temporal reasoning, which is the vital ability to understand the order of events. The model demonstrated an overall accuracy gain of nearly 40% while using 60% fewer tokens. This is the new state of the art for long-term memory, and it's fully open source, modular, and compatible with the platforms everyone is already using. The only potential weaknesses is that the algorithm that decides what should be remembered, forgotten, or updated is fixed in place. But if it were part of a more dynamic approach that rewarded better memory selection, it could be trained alongside the model resulting in a much more integrated and a smooth collaboration. Just like how models learn to use other tools in their thinking, they could learn to use this memory tool more effectively. And that brings us to the second paper, changing the training process to be more scalable and sort of more human-like. In the past few months, we have had at least a couple of decent tries at vision language models trying to add more visual understanding and break the dominance of text in language models. Obviously, visuals like images and videos contain a lot of information, but the standard approach has been train on a lot of text and then add nuggets of visuals to make the models multimodal. But the tide is turning, and GLM 4.1v thinking is probably the best one so far. Vision language model is an AI system built to process and understand text and visuals at the same time, not one over the other, which makes for a much richer interaction with information. Breaking the text dominance is a massive unlock, particularly because it opens up an ocean of new data for training, 
and a lot of useful capabilities for automations. GLM 4.1 is a novel visual language model engineered for advanced general purpose multimodal reasoning, developed through extensive pre training and reinforcement learning with curriculum sampling, which is a very interesting approach that we are going to talk about. And it results in a model that demonstrates a state of the art reasoning across STEM problems, video understanding, and more, even competing with giants like GPT 4.0 while being orders of magnitude smaller. At the heart of this paper is what researchers call a reasoning-centric approach, a philosophy designed to force the model beyond simple pattern matching and into genuine reasoning. To do this, they used a two-step process. First, they built a powerful foundation model using massive-scale pre-training on visual and language data, which is pretty standard. Think of this stage as training a world-class athlete. This first stage isn't about teaching them specific strategies. It's about building their raw physical power, their speed, strength, and reflexes. It's creating the raw potential to process information. But the pivotal point of the paper is training using reinforcement learning with curriculum sampling. As opposed to the standard approach where the model gets simple rewards by giving the right answer, in RLCS, the model is presented by tasks that get harder over time, like a student going over a curriculum. It strategically optimizes the learning path, helping the model to build upon its previous understanding and solve increasingly more challenging reasoning tasks. You might have heard that working with a blank student is easier than working with someone who has the wrong ideas. This is the same concept in AI models. Instead of just hitting the model with random difficulty or same difficulty reasoning tasks that potentially force it to form incomplete understanding, you take the model from the ground up, helping it learn the more foundational concepts, and then build upon its previous understanding to reach new heights. This reasoning-centric approach seems to push the model towards forming immensely more general and powerful heuristics. And the results are impressive across a staggering range of tasks. As shown by the chart, the model is essentially more general than all of its peers. At the top, you have pure analytical reasoning. It can solve complex STEM problems in science, tech, engineering, and math. Then it masters the dynamic world, demonstrating advanced video understanding by following actions and complex narratives in video clips. From there, it moves to practical application, proving its skills in coding and even acting as a foundation for graphical user interface agents, clicking buttons and navigating menus. And finally, it also handles long document understanding. This 9 billion parameter open source model not only outperforms all of its peers, it even surpasses incredibly larger and proprietary models like GPT-40 on a lot of benchmarks. GLM 4.1's ability to outperform or match models much larger than itself signals that there is a lot of efficiency left to be gained in the current paradigm and video is going to play a bigger and bigger role in the near future of training. The video I'm linking here is one that I'm incredibly proud of. But I have to admit, I completely failed on the packaging. I think this is one of the most eye-opening videos about AI on the internet right now. Just give it a few minutes and I think you'll see what I mean. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.